Okay, game two between UPS 4.1 and Kill That UPS. So I'll put a link to game one if you haven't seen it, and to the fleets as well, and the fleet making videos. But we're ready to roll to see who goes first. Uh, we're going to do, once again, we're going to do red for Kill That UPS. They have two English ships and then two pirate ships in for black in the UPS 4.1 fleet. Okay. So unlike last time, UPS 4.1 is going to go first. I think that's good overall to kind of change up how that's going to work. So they're going to place an island right in the middle in that case. And then where they're going to go 6L away, kill that UPS once islands as far apart as possible. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So they're going to go right in the corner. Leave a tiny bit of space for ships on the edge there. I'm going to go in the corner. UPS 4.1 wants islands as close as possible. So they can get between islands easily. So we're going to go 3L from the middle one. And a little bit east will be good. Yeah. And then that one, that way it's 3L from the southwest. Now, so now they're going to go... It's going to be easier to play the game and probably it'll be easier to see it, I think, if I go down here. Well, they can't go 6L from here, so I guess they'll, they'll have to go north. That's all right. So it might be, a, it's probably going to end up being a similar setup to last time. 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm place that island there from uh, Kill That UPS, UPS 4.1. So they're going first. So they know that their home island is going to be chosen for them first. So they still want islands as close as possible. And like, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be too much of a meta here, figuring out island placement, especially based on the first game and how that setup went. So we're going to go like in between here, make sure this one's at least 3L. We're going to go there. So those ones are basically 3L, yep, 3L from each of those. And then the last island can be placed by kill that UPS. So they get to pick the home island location of the first player. So they can place this one, yeah, this is where they can actually place one 6L away and place a fleet there. So I think that's what they'll do. They're going to go 6L away from this. Um, yeah, they could go from there, but either way, it's going to be far away no matter what. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They're going to place that one there. So we're using the whole play space pretty much. And uh, awesome. So now we'll do terrain. So you can pretty much, yeah, basically... <laughs> So they were able to place one far away because they placed the last island. They also choose the home island location of the first player. So we're going to place them there. UPS 4.1, you know, they can, they can pretty much assume they're going to be placed there. It's very unlikely that they'd be placed at one of these islands that's three all apart from a neighbor. So they're kind of, they're kind of anticipating going there. So based on that, they can anticipate placing the kill that UPS fleet at one of the other corners, because Hyena, based on last game, Hyena might be able to come over and hit Coral pretty hard. So they're going to probably pick either southwest or northeast as the Kill That UPS home island location. So they kind of want to choose now and then base their terrain uh, locations on that. So they might choose right now. They're going to probably put them, I think they'll put them in the southwest. I don't think it's going to matter too much. The board is almost like it's symmetrical. Like these two islands are super far apart. Same with the top. They're super far apart. And then there's like this chain that kind of zigzags a little bit. And they're all pretty much three all apart. Maybe these are a little farther, but it's pretty similar overall. So I think they'll probably put them in the southwest. It'll be a little easier for me to get to them so uh all right so terrain 
uh, UPS 4.1 learned from the first game that they actually want icebergs in play. So if they're ahead, they can sabotage their ships, especially the coral. If they've lost their other two ships, they can sabotage coral to try to reach an endgame trigger faster. So they're going to vote for five terrain and instead of three like last time. Last time they agreed on three. This time, kill that, uh, kill that UPS. They're going to vote for three again. So we're going to have a roll off. So black for UPS 4.1, but kill that UPS gets the roll. So they get their terrain quantity they want. So just like in the first game, each back, each uh, fleet is going to place three terrain pieces. So it's going to start with the first player, which is UPS 4.1. So they're going to immediately place a one iceberg and they're going to place it uh they're going to pop it kind of out in the middle of nowhere for the most part uh, they just kind of want that backup option so actually they're going to put it if they know they're picking the other home island there they're going to put it they're going to put it like here actually so that way it's close to like where they anticipate being placed where they are going to go over hidden cove and in between the home islands and closer to their home island than theirs so anyway so that's the decision so three train per player, kill that UPS. They want to place uh, Sargassos like last time. So they're going to put, they might do, I think they're going to do three Sargassos just like last time. So they're going to place, they're going to place one. They're going to try to make it harder for them to get between islands. So they're going to place one there. And then UPS 4.1 is going to place a fog bank um, near this island or these islands. They're going to place one there and then kill that UPS. It's going to place another Sargasso. We're going to put it, um, probably going to, uh, eh, might not be a good spot. I might put it over here actually. Yeah. They're going to try to make this a little bit of a hard path, hard route to go through in case they try to switch islands. So that's their second. Sargasso, third terrain, so last round for terrain. And UPS 4.1 is going to place a fog bank. Um, they're going to place one probably over here, actually. Yeah, they're going to go S away from right there. And then we're going to S or S, S away, I should say, from that island. So once again, in the middle is going to have some terrain. And then a third Sargasso is going to be placed by kill that UPS. And they're going to put it a little differently, I think. I think they're going to put it, um, they're going to put it right here. Make it an even, even more obvious that they're going to choose that as the home island location of the UPS 4.1 fleet, which is indeed what they're going to do. So UPS 4.1 gets to place their ships there, Patagonia. Sea crane and coral. So, all right, so that's that. And then, yeah, the train setup doesn't really change the choice here. They're going to pick, UPS 4.1 is going to pick the enemy home island to go in the southwest. So they'll place their own Patagonia along with Angelica and Hyena. So, so there's that. So we have that part of the setup done. Yeah, I think once the fleets, once the fleets get to know each other a little bit and it's not the first game between them, they can basically, uh, the meta goes a little faster, or at least it can. It might not always, but so now we place crew and I think they're going to, I think both fleets are going to stick with the same crew options. So Bratley and Robinson are revealed in both fleets and for the plus five choices, um, UPS 4.1, I think they're going to pick the same stuff. They're going to pick the oarsmen that start the game on the home island, and then their face down event, which is Hidden Cove, of course. And so the fleets can kind of assume that anything not in the plus five selections are the same as the previous game. So anyway, because they, they already saw each other their last game. It's So it's not like a full reset. So it's not, this game is not being played like the fleets didn't play game one, basically. Like they know, they, they know what crew they saw. It's, it's better to do it that way, I think. Um, 
So it might decrease the value of spires a little bit, but I don't think there's any in the competitive fleets that I have for this tournament anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. So, and then kill that UPS. They have an idea about maybe putting a canceller on Hyena instead of her Captain Explorer Oarsman, but since they won game one, uh, I think they're going to keep it the same. So they're going to they're going to keep it the same and see how it goes. If they had lost the game, I think they'd do that swap, but um, but they won, so we'll see how it goes. And I think it's going to be interesting with UPS 4.1 going first. Um, we'll see if that benefits them a bit compared to the last game. So, so placing crew is done. And then placing treasure. So I think they're going to keep the same. They're going to keep the same treasure distributions. So we're going to keep that the same. And we're going to shuffle here. So, so I'll get that done. And the island's all set up and we'll be ready to play. All right. So we're ready to start game two of UPS 4.1 versus kill that UPS. And we're going to start the timer left for UPS 4.1. They're going to stick to their guns, play Hidden Cove, flip out Coral. She's going to be revealing both crew. So I'm just going to pop them face up. And I want to learn from last game where she's docked. Um, she's going to dock near this fog bank. And then she's going to redock, explore the island with her explorer. We're going to plop the token there. Let's see what she's got. Oh, very similar last game. She does find two negatives. So natives and plague, but she finds the karmic idol too. So they choose the order in which the effects are applied. They're all placed face up at the same time, but then they can apply the effects in any order. So they apply karmic idol first, and that wipes the other UTs out. So very similar, actually. But instead of a gold seven, they find a silver three, which is going to be turned into seven gold. So they're going to flip it home to C crane. They're going to get an explorer, or an oarsman, sorry. Face down oarsman out to the island. C crane is going to redock and drop off the coin, which gets plussed up. They're going to reveal. Um, actually, sorry, it was the oarsman from the song, not the one from the home island. She's going to load another one via the free transfer rules, but, and then, so, uh, not song, Sea Crane has plus one gold. She has Jenny Gallows for plus two and Silver Explorer for plus one on the silver. So that gives them an additional four gold. So we're going to find a two and a couple ones, for four more gold. So they're at seven now at the end of the first at the end of their first turn. Um, funny thing is though, now they can't, they can't uh, send another coin home. They found too many unique treasures. So they're probably gonna pop into the fog bank and hope for a good exit location to get over here. So they're gonna do that. So Micron gave his action to Coral. She ducks into the fog and that ends their turn. So next fleet. They're going to reveal Helmsman on Hyena and Micron. Yeah, both Microns are getting used. So reveal both, obviously. And then, oh, Iceberg. So let me pause it real quick. Make sure. Yeah, I don't play with Icebergs too much. It's the uh, beginning of every player's turn. Usually I do a house rule where it's the first round. It doesn't move. But it says at the beginning of each player's turn, where any actions are assigned, let's roll a d6. So we're going to be rolling a lot for it. And it's not going to happen. So this is for the previous turn. It's not going to hit anything. So we're just going to pretend this already happened. Uh, oh, it does. It is going to move. So we'll see where it goes. A four. So that was that was on their turn. And now, uh, so the clock. I don't think the clock won't start until after this is done. So next fleet um, is going to roll for it as well. Nothing happens. Now they're going to start their turn and. Hyena might explore here. That's a debatable idea. Well, she knows she knows plague and natives were already found, but she doesn't know about uh, where missionary is. So that's an interesting one. Um, 
I think they got to go out and attack the coral again, kind of similar to game one. So I'm going to go one, two, three, yes, four, five, six. Angelica is going to go. They're going to gamify this. Uh, she might not go right there. They can anticipate where her bow is going to be and then measure. Uh, they're not going to be able to block her movement. Like you could set her up here, but Coral will be able to dock like right there and then shoot actually. So, and she can't be shot at while docked. So they're going to go. They're going to stay, keep Angelica over there. And then uh, they're going to end their turn. So, second round, UPS 4.1. It's going to roll for fog exit location. So, oh, actually, that was the, let's say that was the iceberg roll. Sorry. And then fog exit location. Okay, both are threes, so that works. <laughs> and they don't like that roll at all. So they might just go back in. Problem is that gives Hyena time to, to catch up. So but they can't get there. If they sit here, Angelica will destroy her. And they can't reach that island. They can't reach this one, obviously. So they're going to go back in. Uh, sea Crane made a mistake last game of leaving the home island. She's going to stay where she is, definitely. And uh, so nothing there. Next turn, Hyena. Yeah. They don't want Hyena to find Plague and lose all her crew. That's three, four, five, six, and turn. So they're going to go like that. Oh, Iceberg for the last turn. Nothing. Iceberg for UPS 4.1. Okay, it moves. And goes six. Okay. Pause it. We're going to go Fog Bank roll here. One. Okay, that's what they want. Perfect. All right. So now they're going to try to dock as far away from Hyena as possible and to get in range of docking at that island. Oh, this is big because they might be able to build a fort here and then go over here. This could be big. Let's see what they find. So they still have the explorer. So Micron uses his action to get Coral to that island. So Sea Crane is the only one that can be given actions the rest of this turn. Hopefully she's going to unload a coin. Yep. Okay. Oh. Yeah, good UT luck in both games. Maps of Alexandria 732. So the maps flip all treasure in play face up. And that UTs are resolved before anything else, the other stuff happens. So, okay, Savage Natives, Wolves, seven and two. That's big though, because that means that the, the missionary is up here. So a missionary is at this northeastern island. But the key is, I think UPS 4.1 wins right now. So I know that sounds crazy, but they're going to flip home the seven and plus it up. And that's going to be over. So, yep, this is insane. So they're going to, yeah, it's, yeah, it's over. <laughs> this is how ridiculous UPS is. So Maps of Alexandria has already been used. They trade home the seven. It goes to the Sea Crane. Her oarsman goes to the island. Sea Crane redocks. And due to Jenny Gallows and the ship's ability, the seven gets plussed up. It gets plussed up with two and one. So seven, two, one. That gives them 10 more gold. And you only need 16 to win. So they have 17. And now the turn would turn over and it would, it's over. So, so 10 gold. <laughs> this is, this is UPS. This is what happens when UPS goes first. It's just, it's over. So <laughs> this is part of why Wolf hates the more than half end game condition, more than half the starting gold. So, which is fair. Um, I'm going to play some games, a lot of games this year without it, but I want to go as standard as possible for the tournament. Because I think if you use house rules for like a competitive tournament, the results just don't mean anything in terms of like what, how WizKids design the game and stuff like that. So anyway, so. 17 to nothing after two rounds or two and a half. Uh, UPS 4.1 wins game two, and this will require a third game. So, so we'll see who goes first in that one. And 
we'll see if who goes first wins. So thanks for watching. This was a quick uh, competitive game and uh, only took like 10 minutes or whatever off the clock. So it's pretty cool, pretty crazy, <laughs> pretty wild compared to the last game. Um, yeah, they found the karmic idol, knocked out the negatives, and then they got the they got the values they needed to to just win with two coins sent home. So easy peasy. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and check out the affiliate links to support the channel in the description. And the fleets will be in there too. Thanks again.